welcome all of you this is uh, going to be some interesting journey into wireless connectivity okay what i am going to cover in this section is about the technologies which are used for long range long range communication okay what i mean by long range means suppose you have iot devices all around how far they can communicate with the maybe a bts or wireless uh, station base station what is the distance between the device and the base station like cell phone tower so suppose if i have a, a provider service provider like at&t or t mobile or maybe airtel or jio if they install a base station how far i can establish a connection with the network okay so these technologies what we are going to see today they are all fall under this long range cap cap uh, classification and then there are some short range communication technologies also which we will cover hopefully if we complete this today we will cover that in the next lecture and i don't have to give you the reason why we need to learn because all our iot devices are going to have this communication and as a designer of a system you need to make a choice between one technology against the other whether you want to have the iot connected to the net network using either the long range communication or a short range communication technologies or a mix of both normally it will be mix of both and how efficient it will be what you will be using it and what is the power required for your device to have so that you can choose a proper technology for your requirement and what is the data rate that iot device is going to generate how much of data how frequent it is and how important it is for you to have a connectivity with the network internet and what is the latency suppose if this is generating some data if it has to be sent to a cloud how fast you want that data to reach the cloud this is so many constraints or so many requirements which will make you decide or choose one of the technologies and for that reason you should know what those technologies are what are their strengths and what their uh, weaknesses so that you can make a choice properly so i am not going to get into the details of how it is working though i will be interested to do that but i will give you a very higher level overview that you understand what it means okay my intent is not to just tell you that no you assume that it is works but i will tell you um to some extent how things work based on your interest we can uh, based on your questions we can go into the details of any specific things i am not assuming that you know anything about wireless communication so i, I will assume you have no idea about it okay fine now why do we need iot connectivity and what are the considerations you should have before choosing one iot connection okay uh, connectivity technology the most important one is the range okay based on the range there are different technologies available you know that there is a short range bluetooth communication and wifi you know that you can have it within the home or within the airport one particular wifi base station can support some set of users within some radius and you can see cellular which is at the higher end which covers in terms of kilometers this is in terms of meters this is in terms of kilometers and maximum 100 meters or something is what is uh, bluetooth is all about so range is one criteria on which different technologies are divided there are long range technologies which are meant for which fall under this category long range wifi comes in between i would say this is long range and whatever is here the technologies i am showing bluetooth but there are many short range technologies what we will do we will cover one of them there are many but i will cover few of them so that you have a better idea just to give you a brief overview the cellular communication started off with 2g then 3g came second generation third generation then 4g and lte they they all you know can be grouped together 
and then the 5g is now already in the market some of the mobiles are supporting the 5g technologies but still it is in the nascent stage as far as india is concerned but other countries are slowly ramping up on 5g okay so we will see all this not all of them but maybe lte and 5g we will spend some time here now apart from range what are the other wireless technologies you will choose based on what conditions what what you no know, requirements power consumption is one thing which is you are not bothered about the power consumption on the infrastructure side say one thing i will uh, make you clear whatever is the service provider airtel or jio whatever they provide some equipments core networking behind some base station all that comes under infrastructure okay so that is infrastructure and this is end devices our communication devices are end devices so what we are worried about the power consumption is about the end devices not about whether jio is spending more time more energy or not that's not our concern we are bothered about our mobile devices or our iot devices how much they have to spend power to connect to the network okay or to be in connected uh, uh, to the network always okay that is what is uh, important for us and the data rate and latency what i mean by data rate is suppose you have a device and then you have a base station you are connected it now like a mobile device it is connected what speed that data you can send across now there are some downlink and uplink is very popular statement so you can assume that iot devices are the down okay compared to the base station of course in terms of height it will be down so any data okay so may, let me call it as a base station this is iot device maybe i'll call it as mobile any data which is flowing down from the base station to the mobile device is a downlink and this is uplink okay pictorially you can understand now you know that when you are testing your laptop also with your wifi uh, the speed test when you do network speed test it will give you two parameters one is downlink and uplink what we are bothered more in mobile usage is how much i can download because most of the time you will be taking youtube or other uh, email access all they need a downlink speed which is better but occasionally we also do uplink because we want to upload like me i am uploading the recordings from here that depends on the uplink speed that the service provider provides so most of the time we will be using downlink and sometime occasionally when you are uploading something or you are uh, online uh, uh, live on facebook then you are uploading your video onto the facebook network so that will be there but most of the time we need more of downlink data rate okay this is data rate is how many bits per second uh, because all the communication is happening in binary form so all, it's always given in bits per second so mbps or kbps that is the data rate normally downlink will be supported will be much more than or not much more slightly more than the uplink speed okay that is one thing about the data rate now what is what is latency suppose you have you are on a, a voice call voice call okay voice over ip maybe skype you are using oh, sorry skype now when you speak you normally see that if it is the data is you no know, bad there will be a delay lag in terms of what you hear from the other end so this lag is very annoying normally you know in the voice call whereas this la lag which is not very uh, much a uh, problem when there is a video going on just a video download or some live video is going on because they can be buffered and you can be played it will delayed on your mobile so that you don't sense it but if you are on a video call you have another problem which is called lip syncing okay and you need to be lip synced with the video so that audio and video should also be played at the same time so these are all the different requirements on the network when we are doing different when you are running different applications when you are uploading something or downloading some files uh, as well as when you are on a audio call or a video call the requirement from the network is different based on the applications now 
latency comes into play when you have a voice call because all the audio packets which are going and then the reply coming from there if there is a lag then you will get annoyed and you will see that you know the other person is responding to your queries little later so normally what is acceptable is around 250 millisecond of latency if you want to have a decent uh, voice call audio call okay now different network technologies have different latencies okay that means when you send something how far how much time does it take for round trip delay is something round trip delay rtd we call that is when you send something how much time does it uh, take for that to come back okay that is all round trip delay um, this 250 millisecond is that how much you can allow this kind of a delay in the network so that your audio call is not will not be uh, annoying okay that is a latency part so the considerations are data rate and latency now what about iot devices normally iot devices dip, uh, that also depends on the application suppose if there is a video uh, monitoring closed circuit video or there is a traffic in the traffic signal they have a video which is being uh, uh, no camera is there which is being monitored by the traffic controller somewhere in the city and they are tracking some person which is kidnap who is kidnapping someone so we want to track that video that means this video delivery should be you know immediate real time to the control center so that they can track the video and take action accordingly or if some accident is there if they want to send a ambulance so the iot devices always do not assume that there are they they can live with the latency okay there are some applications which needs high latency uh, means live with uh, a uh, higher latency value that means very slow in terms of response some needs a real time which is a slower latency is required okay latency means if it is large it means it's a poor network it is always in milliseconds okay it is all or seconds okay in time it is in terms of seconds this is in terms of bits per second rate okay so understand this basic functionality so that you will be able to connect with what i am saying of course cost and deployment is important because we want a cheaper technology on the iot devices so that it can connect to the network so what you spend money on building this iot device is also very important and how easy it is to deploy it in a particular place suppose if you are putting it in a smart smart city or some kind of applications you want to make sure that already existing technology wireless technology like service providers with them this whatever you are putting here will be able to connect to it so you don't we want to you know bring in some new infrastructure to open up your iot application or iot uh, services uh, to industry so it depends on how easy it is to deploy so you should always try to see that existing infrastructure can be used for your installation or not whether the deployment cost based is depends on whether can you make use of existing infrastructure in the city or in the uh, area where you are installing your iot devices availability how far is, is this uh, network is available how reliable it is in terms of uh, reliability is different availability in the sense when i want this iot device to be connected to the network is there network available 24 bar 7 or not scalability suppose if i want to increase the number of iot devices now 100 are there maybe the customers are happy and they want to install some few more will i be able to scale easily or not whether the network will support me or not reliability of course you know i don't want this to be disconnected even if power goes or there is a shutdown the still the base station should be operating on the batteries so that they can still provide connectivity with the network so reliability is also important and how reliable it is whether the calls or data drops very often or is it uh, or there is a noise and you are not able to send the data reliably those things talk about reliability which is a you can call it as quality of experience q o e quality of experience quality of service you might have heard in networking quality of experience is what is now talked talked about in iot applications okay i hope this basic idea you are getting in now why are we talking about network why is it important for iot i hope this is clear now any questions or anything you can drop me or interrupt me let me see if there are anything here okay fine always ask me any doubts if you are
want me to explain something more okay fine now let us see few technologies here i am sure you might have you are uh, you know that there are zigbee and z wave there are other technologies let me explain the legend if it is a smaller circle that means it allows lower bandwidth okay now another thing i need to explain what is bandwidth bandwidth is something like suppose if you have a bus and a train which has got a higher bandwidth okay train and this is bus naturally bus has a lower bandwidth than the train because it can carry more people in one go whereas bus can carry much less so bandwidth means how much of data can you send in a given time that is it is also measured in terms of bytes per second or bits per second and capital b for bytes and small b for bits so if you see bps it means uh, bits per second now this circle if it is big it shows that it can provide a it's similar to a pipe okay if uh, if you are having a pipe of uh, quarter inch and a half inch you can see which is having more bandwidth all right so how much data can it carry that is what shows the bandwidth and the coloring inside shows you the latency higher latency means they delay more okay higher latency is not good okay please remember higher latency is not a good property whereas this is good this is good whereas this is not good okay so latency means delay so you can see that 5g always scores high it is the biggest circle in the world in this uh, thing and then it is also white because it is the lowest latency that they offer whereas others are having uh, different latencies which you can see based on the color so that is one property now where are they placed they are placed in power here power consumed by the devices to connect to this network okay do not assume it is on the network side it is always on the device side so this communication they are all very low power whereas if you want to communicate with 5g it is like this of course satellite needs a high very high power because you need to send a signal which can be received by the satellite okay so similarly the receiving also will be very poor because signal strength is very weak so distance is high in terms of 36000 feet or something so that is the power requirement and then this is the range requirement so if it is here it's a lower long, short range and this is at the long range okay now you understand the picture now there is one more thing i need to explain about is uh, sorry this is the background of this this is unlicensed spectrum this is licensed spectrum so you might have heard all this 3g 2g 4g they have like spectrum auction happening because government owns the spectrum spectrum means nothing but the frequencies uh, different technologies operate under different frequencies in terms of gigahertz or megahertz so those frequencies are allotted by the government by local government or uh, the central government in india of course so there is a auction for different service providers to ask for it bid for it and then they get the license spectrum that means when they get the spectrum that frequency band they will be given some particular maybe 33 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz or whatever frequency then they are allowed to use this frequency to communicate in that area okay and this spectrum is also based on the sectors or regions now you cannot uh, you have to buy the auction uh, get it Uh, licensed for a particular region you are not free to use anywhere you want but you for a particular region you have to buy so that frequency can be used then this the service provider can install the devices and they can communicate using that frequency okay but as a user you don't need to bother about it because even though you are also transmitting it some mobile you are transmitting to the by station but you are not paying for the spectrum the service provider is paying and then you are paying him the money and they get it for you know for servicing your requirement so we don't pay for the spectrum but these people pay and they provide you the communication but that doesn't mean that you are not transmitting you are also transmitting once you receive the frequency from them you also need to transmit back to the base station to communicate what you have so uh, we also transmit from the mobile devices but we don't pay for it so now what about this bluetooth 
these frequencies are unlicensed this is what is called ism band um, you know the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz these frequencies uh, even the wi-fi whatever the frequencies we have they operate under 5 2.5 gigahertz and there is a 5 gigahertz also some wi-fi operate in both okay we use both the band uh, for our wi-fi communication this is being in a unlicensed spectrum we are free to use it okay even we can put a wi-fi router we, we, are, we are transmitting uh, in our area but we don't pay anything to government because it is free even our microwave oven they are used in the same frequency okay so they all work on the same frequencies but they don't interfere with each other because they follow some modulation technologies which make sure that they don't interfere with each other and we can communicate you know uh, using uh, this uh, wireless communication okay so i hope this picture is clear to you i am going slow because assuming that you don't know the background of wireless i thought this is a good place wherein you have a, a little bit of understanding of how things work now we are going to spend more time on which is very you know uh, closer to our heart in in terms of iot these two wireless technologies are used for lp band lp band is nothing but low power wireless uh, sorry uh, wide area network so it's a low power uh, technologies you know it is iot is using it so we are going to spend some time on these two technologies okay i hope this is clear now one more comparison of different technologies lp band which we saw ltm this also we are going to see this also we are going to see they are all the access technology suppose when i say access means suppose you have a wi-fi or a mobile and then base station what technology you use what wireless technology you use to access the network okay is this technologies ltm or nbiot or lora okay these are all these are all standard 3gpp is a standing standard standards body which define the standards for this wireless technologies sigfox is also one of the standards and they all fall under lp ban category okay now what about this pan personal area network they all these technologies fall under that the distance wise it is shorter this is local area network wireless lan hello yeah sir can you explain one more time lp ban okay so lp ban is a wireless technology which operates with a lower power okay that means suppose i have an iot device which is using this technology one of them to connect to the network they use low power they need a low power only okay whereas a normal 5g or lte or for a mobile communication that we use they consume much more than what you see here that's the difference okay in terms of how much power you need to use to communicate with the network that is what is the category uh, classification is it okay yes sir okay thank you so satellite of course is a high power yeah somebody else okay now lte lte is long term evolution which is a 4g network okay this is falling under 4g uh, fourth generation uh, cellular network ltm is a part of that but it is different okay LTE is used for voice communication from mobiles okay whereas LTM is for LTE for machines which is for machines to communicate with the network now there is a difference between a mobile used by a user communicating with the wireless network and a machine or an IoT sensor or a device communicating with the LTE uh, over the network I'll tell you the basic difference this communication is initiated by the user and it is uh, operated by a mobile user mobile device and there may be a voice call or video call or you know youtube playing or maybe uh, email communication all those things fall under the user interaction whereas ltm means machines are communicating that means the iot devices are communicating then there is nothing like somebody sitting in the iot device to operate so they have a different requirement than what we as a mobile users expect from the network 
the devices can live with latencies but we do not bother you know take you know we cannot uh, uh, handle if the airtel takes more time for connecting our uh, network or if it is our device or if our wifi uh, uh, connection if the data rate is going down or it is disconnected we get perturbed much more than the device devices can live with it they can be designed to live with kind of a latencies so the requirements are different that is why they fall under lp because they don't transmit always whereas mobile devices are always connected and they are transmitting always that is why when we are getting into the airplane we are asked to get into a uh, you know, airplane mode because our mobile devices keep transmitting wire wireless uh, you know in the in this frequencies if i say that a 5g frequency is working in some 30 gigahertz and then you have a mobile which is capable of connecting to 5g network that means that 30 gigahertz frequency our mobile device is also transmitting okay not only the 5g devices are transmitting or uh, base station is transmitting even our mobile devices are transmitting so that's why we are asked to move into airplane mode in a aircraft because that may interfere with the wireless kind of communication that pilot is having as well as the the electronic circuitry within the aircraft as well as the engine control and other things so so to just uh, uh, no uh, clarify this statement machines do not need as much of data rate as our humans need and the latency requirements based on the application we can live with very very few you know uh, kilobytes or very less latency uh, sorry latency means in terms of millisecond we are we are able to live with some 10 to 50 milliseconds I iot devices can live with that if they are not sending data which is time sensitive or real time uh, data similarly the data rate will be very low because the sensors may be sending very very less data frequently maybe but it may be very less so because of that requirement the data rate is less and the latency is not very high you know expectation is not very high so they can operate under low power that's why they fall under this category so mobile communication over the LTE network is different from IoT communication over LTE. You should understand the difference between these two. Okay, fine. Now let us now get into some interesting part. What is LP band? It's a long range connectivity. I told you it falls under that category, and it is a licensed spectrum. Okay, that means they are all you now LTE M and other things are all LTE is a licensed spectrum. Please remember. It is provided by the service provider so it's a mobile network they need a license for operating there okay so it's a license spectrum and it is cellular technology because we are using the existing cellular or satellite technologies to communicate okay but we want to use low power okay that i will tell you how it can be achieved so it's a uh, 3gpp is the standard body which has been defining the standards for 2g 3g 4g now let me ex uh, explain you why do we need a standard body to define 2g or 3g or 4g or 5g whatever the main reason is suppose you have you are in china or you are in india and then you move you go to usa you don't throw your mobile what you use in india when you move to usa right when you are traveling to usa so the same mobile should be able to connect to t mobile which is being you no know, orange or t mobile which is being which are the service providers in the us or even at and t okay they provide the support for the wireless connectivity there whereas in india when you are in india our airtel or um, um geo is supplying so our mobile device is the same okay so the technology that our Airtel is using if they are supporting 5G as well as T-Mobile if they are using supporting 5G they need to follow the same standard then only the mobile that you use here will go there and then they can also connect to the network there but you may you may be paying in US dollar here or you may still be using of course you will be home network you will be using your own mobile number everything is valid there so you may pay for the a roaming facility or international roaming you will be paying the airtel and airtel has a tie up with the one of this network so that they allow you to connect to the network okay so 
that is why the standard is required across the world you cannot have a 5g now what i mean by standard means suppose you are using a frequency okay it is not stopping with only the frequency what gigahertz you are using okay uh, not 50 gigahertz maybe 28 to 26 to uh, 35 or 40 gigahertz is the high band with high band frequency for 5g not only the frequency even the way the trans the data is sent over the by wireless network and what modulation is being used and how they are connecting it what signaling is used control and signaling they all there are so many standards which need to be taken care so that our mobile can talk to the network so there is a stack a software stack running here on the mobile as well as on the wireless side so they need to talk to the each other unless they follow a standard they will not be able to you know communicate with each other that is the reason there is a standardizing body which defines what to be used what frequency to be used what modulation to be used and how signaling has to be done all that is pre-decided and all the vendors this is one thing and other one is suppose you are having a product coming from qualcomm i said qualcomm is in this technology that means they make chips which go into this mobile devices 5g modem they call modem modulator demodulator why we call as modulator demodulator because this device the chip what you have it on your mobile needs to modulate all the signal that we transmit to the network similarly when it receives the signal from the network it should demodulate it and give it to you understand it and give it to you the actual data that is coming from the network so this is called modem modulator demodulator so that is a 5g modem from the uh, chip vendors like qualcomm intel they provide the chip they provide chip for us on the mobile device and they also provide chips for the wireless devices what they build now which are the companies in the wireless network i told you service providers but service providers at and or mobile t mobile they what they do is they buy from uh, uh, companies like cisco ericsson okay and nokia yeah i know uh, alcatel lucent these are the companies which make the wireless equipments infrastructure side okay they build the equipments they buy chips from qualcomm this these companies are the customers for qualcomm so qualcomm sells it to them similarly they qualcomm sells it to samsung lg apple they uh, they sell it to them also so that they can make chips and they can put their modem into this but they make different versions of the modems because they will use low power chips here it will be high power high uh, data rate chips here because you can imagine a yeah, modem here on the wireless infrastructure side which is being built by these companies for the service providers like at and t mobile they need to handle multiple connections coming from mobiles okay they are handling much more higher data rate suppose if you are giving one kilobit bit per second data every mobile is going to give that much of data so these devices need to handle much more data than the modems which are operating here so the qualcomm which is building the chips they will build same technology same 5g 4g or 5g but they build chips for different uh, scales because they are meant for different operating conditions if it has to be within the mobile it will be different if it has to be in a infrastructure side it will be different i hope you understand how things all work together okay so this is how they they work together that's why they need a standard so that qualcomm knows the standard to build the chip similarly cisco's and ericsson can write the software stack and the backend systems for the service providers to connect to the internet so this wireless technology is very very vast and very technical contents are very high okay fine now lp band it is optimized for smaller devices as i told you iot devices are small they don't have power they are operating on batteries so they need to be optimized for low power not very time sensitive as i mentioned it is not very time sensitive so latency can be very large and the data rate can be very poor no problem and i want a longer range why i can have connectivity with a 
a wider range okay i can uh, i can deploy my iot devices over kilometer range in a device uh, in a city and i have a wireless service provider lte provider i can connect to them using this lp wan technology okay that is a purpose okay fine it runs on cellular lte network now as i mentioned the sim card which is going to go into the mobile is different from what we use it in the machines because they need to have a sim card because that only gives the identity for the mobile network to know whether this device is having a proper you know this is a subscriber identity module which is specific to a service provider airtel i cannot have a airtel sim card and expect it to connect to jio you can do it but it's not that you are always connecting to airtel but initiation call initiation and acceptance will be done by the airtel and then they may use on the way somewhere suppose you are you are calling somebody who is having a, a sim with a jio connection okay you have a jio connection here and you are having airtel connection but they talk to each other right so these networks can talk to each other that's why now a mobile number can be portable also now they have made it so easy that you can even port your mobile numbers across so as long as your mobile number is registered with a particular service provider they understand the sim and they provide the connectivity to you okay similarly it is also true for our iot devices also so they use different uh, wireless technologies to connect to the uh, base band uh, base station sorry now what is the range of this it is 1 to 5 km in urban areas whereas 40 km in the rural areas why is it different let me explain what is the difference between urban and rural areas and why is the range is lower in urban areas whereas it is large in terms of rural areas see what happens is even though the technology may support a long range as the name says is a low power van so it is uh, supposed to be meant for a longer range communication but within the urban area the connectivity range is smaller because of density of density number of users in a particular area okay that's why when you get into some cricket stadium or a big uh, political rally there are many people there and they all try to connect to the network now imagine you are in a, a big uh, it uh, area suppose in bangalore it is called itpl you know uh, itpl is uh, a very good example of where lots of companies are there it companies are there in a one particular area there are some wireless providers also but they try to take care of this kind of a density of users and they provide connectivity to them they install more base stations around this area because they expect more connections to come from the users in that area now don't think that suppose there are 10000 people in this area this base station can support 10000 connections at a time if they have to provide then they have to invest a lot of money which they don't do because not that everyone in the area is going to call up at the same time that's why they normally provide 20% of the user density or maybe 25 20 no around that percentage only they support they expect that only some 20% of this crowd is going to make a call at the same time that is why when you suddenly you see some emergency happen some uh, bomb blast has happened in the near area nearby area or uh, there is a uh, uh, lockdown somewhere and all the people here try to connect to the network and you see that you are not able to make connection because service provider has already you know uh, supporting all the people and they cannot provide any more users that's why you will not be able to connect to the network when there is a lot of demand more people are trying to connect to the network at the same time because they cannot support all of them and because they have not taken care of that kind of a load okay so understand this background information so that it will be useful to you in a real life also as well as when you are into technical domain when you are going into the installation and design of iot devices now lp wan is already there 70% of the wireless connectivity of cellular I, iot is using this okay i hope 
this overview is uh, clear to you let me see whether there are any questions or any doubts anywhere from any of you very good maybe i don't know how to, okay ltm connection okay um, i don't know which uh, country you are asking so this is uh, even our uh, providers they will support this okay even uh, when i have uh, when i was in anival we were having uh, some sensors which are connected to wireless network and they provide this but I, it may not be ltm it was that time it was 3g but you can buy machine dependent uh, acm for sorry sim cards for machines also uh, wherein you want to provide a wireless connectivity um, this exactly ltm is supporting in our area in india or not i am not sure maybe i will uh, find out and let you know uh, special type of sim slot no they have a okay let me explain that that's uh, bring out uh, another question um, where is it okay see sim slot is different from uh, the sim connection see let me explain sim card sim card has a standard like uh, even sd card also has a standard okay the hardware uh, chip whatever you provide that will be a standard okay that sim card shape or size will not be there maybe micro sd card or my, that size definition will be different but that sim card size will not change but what is stored in the sim card is different okay so um you you know that uh, there is a number called um i forget the name uh, i forget the name of the identity number so every device has a like a mac address for our network okay mac address is already is suppose you have a ethernet card ethernet card or ethernet lan connection you have uh, in your laptop the mac address is already frozen in the network okay it is decided already in the during the manufacturing itself which mac address gives uh, a part of this information is giving you which manufacturer has taken you know made this uh, you know lan card or ethernet card uh, and then they have a some pre allotted mac addresses assigned to them so this is frozen and it is fixed in the device itself whereas ip addresses are allotted based on the wireless connection or a service provider you connect to so ip is ip network address is uh, dynamic whereas mac addresses are static frozen similarly the each of the sim cards come with the identity number i forget the name i maybe idm I, uh some oil uh i am ah yeah 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 i am e i i am e i okay uh mobile equipment identity so this numbers are unique for every mobile device that every uh person, you know samsung or lg providing so similarly sim card also has a, a number which is already frozen okay so their uh, shape and inter you know interface will be same but the identity stored there will indicate to the service provider that this is a sim card from the device or it is a sim card from a mobile and most probably it could be that same sim card will be there um, and when you are registering with the service provider you will say that it is for that device okay and what is the plan whether you are which data plan you are getting into so uh, based on that they will provide you the traffic uh, or uh, data rate they will provide you okay if you are registered for a higher data rate it doesn't matter what sim you use but once you uh, register with the service provider that i am uh, i want more data rate then they you will be given more priority compared to others okay so those things are all software handled okay so imei okay right good okay i forget all kind of things okay so okay guys good now lp van is done okay this much is uh, understanding is good enough i feel now what i am going to get into is what is the wireless technology okay what i mean by that is suppose you have a network okay lte network of course and then what is the technology or the protocol that you use to connect to the network okay is different and they all fall under this category because they are low power van network that means long range network connectivity but there are different protocols or different signals or different uh, modulation all that will be different so that we will see now okay 
is called LTA machines. Don't get worried. Understanding this picture is very simple. I'll tell you. Okay, uh, any network you can understand it. Um, legends, if you understand, and then basic functionality, if you understand, you will be able to clearly say what is happening. Now, this LTEM uses gateways. Okay, these are all called gateways. Gateway is something, an equipment which sits in between the actual network, which is like a bed station or whatever, and your devices. Okay. Now, what is the connectivity? Now, let us understand from the device to the network. Here, there is a solid line is given. That means it is a capillary. Capillary means the last, you know, you say in network, they say last mile. Okay, L O S T, not L A S T is L O S T. Okay, L A S T, last mile connectivity. Okay, uh, when the network, when finally the device is connected, that is called last mile. So this is all last mile, the end connectivity. Whereas at the back end, you know, the core network they have a connectivity there. Okay, but last mile is something which is connecting to the device. Now. It could be this connectivity, whatever is shown here, could be wired. That means you can have a wired connection or a wireless, okay, in the LTM. Now, LTM interface is that protocol as I mentioned, okay. Uh, what kind of signaling they have between the base station and the gateway? That is what is shown here. Now, non LTM interface, this is this non LTM interface. That means they don't communicate using the LTM network. It may be you know, a LTM uh, protocol. They are not devices. They may be a uh, mobile uh, users. It could be okay. They also connect to the wireless uh, base station. Now, who is providing what? These devices, the wire, this uh, uh, gateways, normally it is supplied by the service provider. But bought by the user, okay. Like what you have, suppose if you have a wireless uh, Wi Fi connection, you have a Wi Fi router which is also a gateway into their Wi Fi connect, you know, the network, okay. Um, so it behaves like a router to connect to our devices, okay, Wi Fi router in our home, whereas it is a gateway as far as the network is concerned because that is the way through which that is the net, uh, device through which you are connecting to the network. Similarly, here also they are connecting to this uh, gateways. That's why they call it as a gateway, gateway into the uh, LTE network. Now, remember one thing, this LTE baseband, whatever, these are all there, they are all installed for mobile communication. We are building the LTM network on top of it. So, if the service provider has upgraded their devices to support LTM, then they will be able to connect to our IoT devices. Okay, it is not that not all LTE network can be LTM enabled. Remember that LTE is for mobile communication, whereas LTM is for device communication using the LTE network. So it is an add-on feature supported by the service provider, which we are using it to connect to. Okay. Now, how the LTE works is, is shown here. Uh, they have a, uh, I'm not able to, oh, sorry. Okay. Now, don't go into the details of everything. One thing you understand that these devices, they have a, a multicast unit. I am sure you know what is multicast. Multicast means a network is multicast enabled means it can communicate like a broadcast. The difference between broadcast and multicast is broadcast sends to everybody in the network. Multicast is for a specific group of devices in the uh, network. So multicast is a subset of broadcast. Not all devices are capable of doing multicast. So that's why it is shown that multicast devices are a little different from um, other devices. And node B is on standard. Uh, um, technology, uh, sorry, uh, infrastructure um, module meant for radio accessing network, radio access network. Okay, it's called RAN. Okay, 
uh, e, a node B is for RAN of LTE. Similarly, 3G also has a RAN, 4G also has a LAN. LTE falls under 4G category. Okay. Now, one more thing I will tell you. When you are having a mobile, you have both voice connection and data connection, right? So, this is earlier, it is called GSM and GPRS, okay, packet service. So, what happens when you are connecting to the network, you are using the same wireless connectivity, but once it reaches the base station, here it divides the network into voice and data. So, the data goes through the internet and other things. Voice, normally what happens is it also goes through the voice network or voice also can be made into IP packet and gets into IP internet. So, it, it can go, voice also can go in the data network, but data always goes into data network, okay. So, if you are using GPRS connectivity data, you have enabled it, then you are using a GPRS portion of the GSM network. GSM is the 2G, 3G uh, standard. But now, 5G is something which is completely backend is IP, okay. That means it use packet network for even voice, data, everything, okay, complete IP. Whereas 4G and 3G, they use mix of both. And uh, what happens is whatever you speak is digitized, of course, made into IP packet like a voice over IP and then sent to all the IP network. So that's why latency is very important in the network because voice packets need to be routed very fast without much of delay in the intermediate routers so that they reach the destination without any delay. Okay, that is very time sensitive. IP packets, whereas data packets belonging to e email or any document download or YouTube, they given a lower priority for the network traffic compared to voice packets. So that's what is called diff service. If you have heard of diff service, differentiated services based on the service, suppose IP packet may be carrying either a PDF file data or it may be carrying a voice data. If it is a voice data, that IP packet should be given a higher priority compared to carrying some data PDF file data. Okay. So that is called differentiated service, which the routers in the network, they need to handle it. Okay. Fine. I think I am going very slow, but it's okay. I want you guys to have a complete picture of wireless connectivity and uh, I'm sure I'm okay for spending more time on this. Okay. Now traditional cellular standards. Okay. Remember one thing that normal voice calls, they need low latency. I told you. When you are speaking, we don't want to hear that other fellows, you know, replying to your question, which you asked 10 minutes back. So we are very, very sensitive to the latency and bandwidth intensive because we want fast connection to the network. We want YouTube not to have a lag. So for data applications in a traditional cell phone network, whereas IOT, okay, let me tell you, they are not scalable for IOT, okay. What I am saying not scalable means you cannot provide this kind of a service for billions of IoT devices, which is impossible because you know that by 2020 now by now, uh, they expect IoT devices to have be more than the world population. Okay. It is in terms of from 50 billion, 20 billion, I remember 20 or 30 billions of IoT devices are going to be there. So you cannot cater for such a high data intensive low latency, debt, high, high bandwidth requirements cannot be handled for IoT devices because they are very much, much more in terms of number compared to human beings. So their density is also very important. Device density is very high in terms of some places, smart city or something. Power requirements are very less. So we cannot provide such a bandwidth for a device which is running on a low power battery. So it's not possible. That's why we are using LTM and low power WAN connectivity for IoT devices. So LTM is suited for IoT devices, not the cellular LTE. That's why the new standard has come to cater for the low end requirement of the IoT devices. We cannot use this because it needs more power. If you want to connect to LTE network, you need to use more power, whereas LTM can handle a yeah, low power connectivity. That's why if you see here, there is a gateway here provided so that the IoT devices need not have to be connected to the network directly. Okay. 
if they have to transmit signal wireless signal directly like our mobiles they need to use more power whereas if you are connecting to the nearby uh, uh, gateways you don't need to use more power and this in turn is are connected to the power and they don't have a power uh, you know shortage so they can communicate to the base station effectively that is the reason it is going through the uh, gateway okay understand this nitty gritties of why things are required and why is it implemented this way so that you understand the holistic picture of how things work so this is a wi-fi this is all wireless and what is happening here is a uh, backend is core network or backend is on the internet that means they are all on ip packet okay ip network fine now low power machine to machine communication so one more thing uh, okay let me not uh, go into detail machine to machine is like um, you know the iot devices communicating with each other as well as with the backend uh, cloud or whatever this allows battery life of 10 years you can see once the devices are installed it can work on work for 10 years in a given battery okay maybe there will be some harvesting power harvesting may be there but still they are up they can be operational for 10 years that means you can imagine the requirement of power needed for connecting to the lte machines okay it's very low and then this network can coexist along with other standard which is already there in the market and right now in 2009 last year uh, there are al already 100 operators supporting this okay in over 35 countries this is very popular what is the major challenges in mobile communication is to maintain high data rate connectivity which is scalable with lower delay okay see the challenges why we want to come up with a new technology or a new standard is they need to maintain the communication with a decent data rate which is scalable because iot devices can grow in terms of numbers and have a decent delay latency and security iot devices have to be secure that's why all the data which is going into the iot is encrypted so they need to provide support for security also so the peak data rate is around 1 mbps and latency is around 10 to 15 millisecond this technology supports this much of uh, data rate Nokia, Ericsson, AT&T are the key infrastructure vendors. See, when I say device vendors, maybe I can say infrastructure device vendors. They, they are not infrastructure. I'm sorry. Uh, the Nokia, Ericsson is the infrastructure vendors only. Who is providing the device to them is Qualcomm and others. Intel, as I explained, modem chips are uh, supported, uh, given by them, uh, which is bought by Cisco's and uh, Ericsson's to provide the infrastructure to the people. Okay. I hope this is clear to you.